Hello, everybody, and welcome to your Manchester. Happy New Year, and Happy New Year to you. I know, do you know what? It's so good to see you and be back here in the studio. Yes, it's January, but we've got so many exciting things to look forward to coming up in 2019. We, we have, and I suppose the first thing we should talk about, really, is the fact that we are doing something very special over half term, aren't we? <gasps> yes, we are. I am so excited about this because we are giving your children out there or anybody's children that you know the chance to become us <laughs> god bless you all <laughs> we're searching for some mini me's for the your manchester team and we're going to do a very special episode this easter so in the next week or so we're going to be giving you the details of all that and how you can get your child involved in this very show that's right now um did you did you um, eat much over christmas and new year I might have had quite a little bit. Yes. Six pounds worth. Six pounds worth. Well, that would have been good for me, everybody. That would have been good. I've had to start contouring my cheeks in, like, skeletal. <laughs> uh, just to make sure I've got some semblance of bone, We really. enjoyed it, though, didn't we? All those mince pies, all yes. those sailors drunk. Yes. You know, it was good. But, but we, we are going to do something about it this year, though, aren't we? we? We've set ourselves a challenge here at Your Manchester with Bell and Shell to do uh, a little bit of running. Yeah, we are going to do some running. I'm also going to get somebody to whip you into shape as well. I would settle for just the whip, to be honest with you. But anyway, so we've got loads and loads of challenge stopping. <laughs> we've got loads and loads of challenges and things that we are setting ourselves for this year. And as well as that, our titties is going to be setting us um, some challenges as well. Oh, well. it certainly is. And only the way that titters can set a challenge, so, you know. Absolutely. Well, I suppose what we should do is, first of all, move on straight away to our first guest. Yeah, on... Your Manchester! Well, here we are now, joined by one of our regular guests, everybody. Oh, and doesn't he look gorgeous as usual? He I made an effort for you. You always look dapper. Thanks. Always look dapper. And this time, you're, you're not, you're not uh, Lord Mayor, in it. No. You're here now to tell us about a specific piece of wonderfulness, which is this lovely it's bit like, of it's like a bit of art in its own, it in its own way, really. Right, so I love the fact, first of all, that it, it's a case that comes in a bag. I know. It's like a pair of good shoes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Now, the, as many people will remember, um, after we had the, the bombing at the arena, uh, my kit case came up with um, a suitcase which had the emblem of the bee yeah. mm -hmm. uh, that they gave to the charity, which raised, in one night, raised over £9,000. Wow. Um, and what we decided, and I, I sort of picked up on that idea, and we sort of thought, you know, brilliant idea what they're doing, and spoke to them to see whether we could do something for the LGBT community, and we came up with the Pride case. Now, there is two versions, so we've got Pride, but we've also got the, the B, um, yeah. as well, with the, with the Pride colours on the rainbow. And what they've done is 25% of the profits from both of the cases, so 25% of this particular one, the Pride one, is going to the Albert Kennedy Trust that's supporting young people who are homeless. Yeah. And the, the B one um, is still going to the Lord Mayor's Charity. Albert Kennedy Trust, a fantastic charity. Um, it's 30 years this year, actually. Yeah, yeah so, wow. so that'd be good to get uh, Tim or Annie from yes. the, the, the charity on to, to talk about Come Albert Kennedy in. Trust. Yes. Um, and, you know, and they do support young people who... Uh, have been kicked out basically yeah. for, for just being who they are and yeah. the parents don't accept them for being who they are so you know two for me two very worthwhile charities and two good causes and, and Kyle I've got to say it looks a business it looks fantastic so it's not like oh you know buy this it's you know it's quite cool well they, re they retail at 54.99 and this is my this is, I feel like I'm on QVC now oh, no I like uh, it they retail at 54.99 uh, 20 as I say 25 percent of the profits from these goes to charity and the good thing is now as we all know how expensive it is when you're going on a flight now just yeah. the baggage these are ideal to go in the overhead locker. Are they the right size? They're the perfect size of the overhead oh. locker. They've got wheels and on them. I'm, I'm going to show you the inside, if I may. Yes, because what, hold it Yeah, because one thing we also did is um, we thought about, for, for a lot of people, the inside doesn't make a difference. However, oh, but, but, for, me. for the LGBT community, too. we were crucial. So we've even got the rainbows oh, inside. Me. Oh, wow. That is, um, well, that's dramatic. I so, know, isn't it? And, uh, so as I say, so if people do want to purchase any of these or any more information, just go on to mykitcase.com and they're oh, also on Twitter. Oh, it's got the special zip so you can put a proper lock on as yeah. well. Yeah, and I did hold it before and it is still light as well. It's because very light. I think you it get worried that, you know, these hard cases have a lot of weight in them, but it's uh, How it's long really is the nice. candle on it? 
Alex the handle. handle. For you. Oh, look, it's, it's perfect. It's a perfect size. Now we are getting very QVC, aren't we? <laughs> but it is. So, much. so not only does it come in a bag. <laughs> oh, and it moves. Because you know it's you get a lot of pull, pull cases. Yeah, it's on four wheels. It's, it. it's got four wheels. Ideal. No, it's great that you've got involved in this. Really no, do you know, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I am really chuffed. I know it sounds very sort of uh, camp the way we're doing this now, but no, really, really pleased the fact that we picked up on an idea that, that raised a lot of money for Manchester, but also let's look at other options that we can do, raising other money for, for LGBT charities. And I think part of the, the whole thing, especially when we looked at Manchester last year, when, you know, during the summer, when we had prize season, rainbows were everywhere. Yeah. Um, I know this is a bit late for, for, the, for, for what happened over the, for Pride, but, oh, you know, these, these are... Exactly. Mm -hmm. right, it's, early. At, it's, it's, it's early for the Pride season, making sure that everyone knows about them in time. So you've got, you've got a choice of the two. Now, you are going to come back and join us very soon again, <laughs> aren't you, Carl? Because we love having you on this show. Oh, coming on. Because yes. we've got some wonderful news, haven't we? Yeah. You're going to be... I'm going to be a daddy. A daddy! With, there's going to be two mummies and two daddies. Aww. Two mummies and two daddies. Yep, we'll go into that next time. Goodness Absolutely. Me, we'll look forward to that. Yeah. Uh, when, when are you coming back? When, whenever you want. The baby's due on, unfortunately, Brexit Day, but at least there's some good news that day. <laughs> so the baby yes. will be due on the 29th of March. Oh, you come in. Just come in the baby in. <laughs> <laughs> in the suitcase, everybody. There we go. We'll be laughing. Well, thank you very much for your time. A big round of applause, please, for our most regular guest, Mr. Carlos Timpiha. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Well, what a fabulous week for theatre it is so far. Oh, it's brilliant. It makes me want to just jump to the left. And step to the right. Yeah! What? Everybody, the Rock and Horror Show is in town. I had the privilege of speaking to Beverly Callard, Ben Adams, and the gorgeous Joanne Clifton. Let's see what they have to say. T -t -t Touch me. No. <laughs> so here we are everybody, we are in a very empty opera house at the moment But it's not going to be empty in a few days time is it? Because no. you're bringing us the Rocky Horror Show Rocky Horror Show You're going to be Excited. You're going to be in your underpants I am, yes You're going to be doing your most fabulous t -t 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 touch me In the underpants <laughs> And you're going to be jumping to the left and stepping to the right Listen, I'm going to be full of decorum in this Decorum? I I'm quite well dressed for the first time in a long time I was going to say, because normally at the end of the show when we have the narrator, it's a big reveal to see them in something fancy, but you've made a career out of that. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, a journalist actually said to me, uh, right, Beverly, when was the last time you wore fishnets? I said, uh, I play Liz. And yeah. How does it feel for you then when you walk on stage and you know you're having to basically start off the show dressed and get more undressed as you go along? Um, well, I think the, the thing that's the, the worst <laughs> thing is, is the is when they actually whip off all my clothes, uh -huh. um, and then obviously I've been sweating underneath, so it's not very flattering. But um, <laughs> listen, I beg to differ. I've really? seen a recording of the show. I, we only met yesterday. Oh right! But I've seen a recording of the show, and I wouldn't mind ripping your clothes off. Really? I'm telling you now. Well, yeah. That was my train of thought. As well, but I <laughs> of course, of course. Yeah, I, I can, I can be shared. <laughs> It's a great part of the narrator, though, isn't it? I know, it's fantastic, isn't it? It's, it's got such a, a great history behind it, hasn't it? And also, I'm the first woman. Yeah. And I just, I love the way it doesn't judge. No. It's just great. It's, it's I, always been that type of non-judgmental musical. Yeah. Everybody properly by The first of the single musicals as well. And everybody knows, even if you've not seen the show, everybody knows all, all the songs. Yep. So it's just great. And we had so many comments uh, that this was the best cast that they've ever seen and it was the strongest cast and it was you know, the best show. And, and that, that Does that put pressure seen. on you? Well, it was great. It was a relief because uh -huh. those would be the people that would be the most critical. critical yeah. yeah. Um, so you know, if you get it wrong, they'll tell you. Yes. You got it wrong. But uh, so far, one of them told me because I laughed and I'm not allowed. Right. Well, I come out of the stage door and they were like, "You've got to learn not to laugh." Oh. Oh no. I laughed because there's a line in it where um, the Rocky character goes, uh, "I was hiding from my creator and his minion." And then somebody holds up a, a minion and goes, banana, from the audience. And I just didn't expect it, so I just started laughing. <laughs> well, have a fabulous time, and we'll all come and watch it. Check out Amazing. the Rocky Horror Show here at the Opera House. Who we're here with now? It's our gorgeous titters. How are you? And happy new year. Happy new year to the pair of you. You lost weight over Christmas. Yes, it was. Uh, had a lovely Christmas. 
different Christmas. Went yeah. to Cardiff for Christmas oh, to my sons. Wales. Yes, to Welsh Wales. Welsh. No, and you don't have to pay going over the bridge I now as well, Welsh. so it's worth going. I used to live in a place called Penarth. Oh right. Yeah. I, am. I can say Landudna. Go on then. Landudna. I can say I love you. Ah. So, and have you I got New Year's resolutions? Are they anything sporty? Just keeping healthy. Sort of like walking home New Year's Eve. Was it five, six miles? I was about two kilos lighter the day after. And I had eaten See, well I do and a drank a lot. It didn't work for me. Oh, that's because awesome. they've got too many Greggs and Starbucks on the way now, isn't it? That's <laughs> the yeah, there is something that's to be said, though, for walking, isn't there? Massive thing. Massive for me. That's yeah. what we're talking about today. And that's what we're talking about today, walks and rambling. So, yes. with it being, uh, with it having the guest day before from Anxiety UK yes. and what have you, it really, I've thought about walks and rambling because I've got a cousin who suffers from anxiety. Right. And one of the ways she deals with it, she's out in the countryside every weekend, uh, but sometimes she's twice a week. I've seen pictures of her, her and the dog, and they're out in the hills. That's the way, her escape, and how she copes with her anxiety. Yeah. And we've got some great places to walk, haven't we? Well, we have. I mean, we could go on straight into the rambling, but you don't sort of like run a marathon without doing your first 100 yards practice, That's and you've right. got to build yourself up. Yeah. So there's loads and loads of country parks mm -hmm. in and around the area. Yeah. In fact, there's a lovely little site called Country Parks Northwest, and if you have a look on there, you've got Cheshire, Lancashire, Greater Manchester, and Derbyshire, and there must be about 25 different country parks to... And are they only accessible though by car? There's no like trams or anything? A lot of them are, parks. but... Um, I was saying that, Eaton Park. You Eaton Park, you can get to Eaton Park mm -hmm. in a blink. Um, I mean, one of my normal walk, well, my regular walks, so sort of like Clifton Country Park because I'm just around the corner. Mm -hmm. Choose for the ones near water because water doesn't slope. Well, do you know, having said that, I spend a lot of my time taking the kids to Hollingworth Lake, which oh. isn't that far from us. Which is and where I went. Yeah. Did you go I there? I went between Christmas and New Year. Oh, fantastic, Gorgeous. because you've just got to walk around the lake, you know, mm -hmm. it's just enough of a walk, and the scenery is beautiful. Yeah, and they've got a cafe halfway around now. Oh, well, they Oh, there's ice cream, cream and there. chips if you want Oh, them. they are. <laughs> ice awesome. cream and chips? Yeah. Oh, yeah. At the same time? Oh, you, mm -hmm. well, I've been known. But the thing is, we're talking about walking though now in different places and country parks. What is the difference between walking and rambling then? Rambling, tougher gradients. Oh, Simple right. as really. Uh, so do you need your proper walk. walking shoes? If you're looking at rambling, you're looking at sort of like, the, the smaller rambles are six to eight miles. Right. Um, I mean, there's a lovely club that I uh, found online. It's called the Anchor Ramblers and they're based in Lee. And... They've got, they've got some walks coming up, and I think one of them up to the Lake District area, but you've got three different walks when you get there. So if you're a serious rambler, you are with one of the leaders that's doing the extreme rambling. Then you've got the slightly lesser one, then you've got the easy one. So there's three choices of which walk you do when you get there. The membership for the club is, I think it's a Twelve pounds a year to be a member, is it? No, and they've got a, a they've got a bus that was twelve pounds to get you there and back up to the Lake District. And I bet they have a nice country pub at the end of it, don't they? They right? all like... include a pub or somewhere so that you can Probably eat, a bit of drink, oh, proper, yes. and enjoy the oh, countryside. Oh, there with like a but log fire. Mm -hmm. But those oh. are you know sort of like just extreme walking, I suppose, yeah. really. But enjoying the world that you're surrounded in. Ooh. Are you going to walk home then? Maybe not tonight because okay. it's very cold. Mm. Anyway, for now, ta ta, titters. Ta ta. Well, what a fabulous show that was. Loads oh. of guests, loads of insights, and loads of thoughts. I feel really giddy now. I feel like I'm back in the game, got my mojo back, and it's great to see you. Thank you. It's not great good to see, see anybody you else, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, you've got to be this is taking part that counts, isn't it? It's Absolutely. nice to be back on these comfy but chairs. But you know what? It's not just today's show. No, we've got another one on Tuesday. Oh. And yeah. it's jam-packed, everybody, absolutely jam-packed. We've, we've got somebody very special doing that, somebody very special doing that, somebody very special. I'm giving nothing away, you notice, everybody. But uh, make sure you join us on Tuesday. Click here, subscribe here, and we'll see you all again on Tuesday for another wonderful episode of... Your Manchester. Manchester. You never do your research, do you? No. No. Well, that was... That, no, why was it fantastic? Was it fantastic? No, it was a shower of you know, it's the taking part that counts, Michelle, and that's all that matters in the world. We're here sat in the <laughs> cold in this <laughs> building, freezing me knackers off, which shouldn't even be that cold because they're up my bum at the moment, but it's the taking part that counts. <laughs>
This great. is my career. <laughs> to look like Rita Fairclough, to sound like Bernard Manning. Honestly, I can't cope with my life anymore. Should we have a, should we go for it again? <laughs>